Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, we're going to continue looking at Daniel chapter 11. A um, couple little things to just uh, tie up here. And then, uh, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful uh, for the time this morning and for the things that you teach us and the comfort that you give us through your word. And we invite your presence here into this study. We pray for one another. You know, Lord, um, the difficulties that each of us face in life, the battle with self. And Lord, we just ask that uh, as we study your word, that you can come close to each one of us. Help us to see ourselves and to have a vision of Christ. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. In Daniel chapter 11, we had been uh, going over some things that we had already gone over. And, and particularly, we looked at this phrase yesterday, uh, just at the beginning of the study, and then we went into chapter 25 or verse 25 of chapter 11. Um, but that phrase, uh, even for a time. So we had done a slide on that. The slide looks like this. We can just show you that one quickly. So that was um, taking uh, this 360 uh, year symbol of time and applying it to our lines with the Hebrew number 6256. And it yielded um, some interesting results. Um, one is it helped us see a, a chiasm where November 9th, uh, 2004 is the center, the 15-year period, uh, two 15-year periods to make up the 30 years from November 9th, 1989 to November 9th, 2019. And, and just some interesting uh, structures there dealing with uh, the Hebrew number even uh, gives us June 22nd, 2020, if we count from the center of that chiasm. And uh, we also have the idea of a time is a year, years 365 days. You can see that there's 187 inclusive days from June 22nd to December 25th. Uh, and that should be December 25th, 2020, but I didn't put the 2020, it's too much room in there, but you should be able to figure that out. Um, and so that 707 77 day structure can be uh, divided as 226, 187, and 365. And um, so uh, to me, it's, it's just a remarkable structure that definitely is real. It's not something that's, that's imagined. So we also have this here um, with the Battle of Actium and the Battle of Pharsalus that is marked, Pharsalus is marked by Swearingen to the Edict of Milan, so from August 9th, 48 BC, to June 13th, 313 AD. And um, and then we have uh, the normal way that we look at that, even for a time, as being uh, 360 years from September 2nd, 31 BC, to May 11th, 330 AD. So that's the Battle of Actium to the naming of Constantinople and, and which is making it the, the capital of the Roman Empire instead of the city of Rome. And, and so that means we're actually taking two different meanings of uh, the word uh, that he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time that we're, we're having two different meanings of that word against that we're taking it as from the strongholds, upon, over, right, above, or against the strongholds. So, so both are being used, so from and against. And then we can see that there's here some interesting things that, that we didn't notice before. So uh, we did notice the uh, 125,200 days between the Battle of Actium and the Edict of Milan. Right. So that's going to be um, a period of uh, 
when you do that, that one's going to be 340, what is it, 343 years. So it's less than, so it's 17 years less, right, roughly, um, than 360 years. And then we have uh, the fact that that number can be div div divided by 313 to the factors of 313 and 400. So 400 represents a period of affliction, right? You shall be afflicted 400 years. So that would be the first um, example of a symbol of 400. And um, so the 400 represents the affliction. The 313 obviously represents the Edict of Milan when that affliction begin or ends. And um, it's in the time of, well, it has to do with uh, the perse persecution that had happened originally under Diocletian. And then um, when we look at those spans of time, so we look at the first one between the Battle of Pharsalus and Actium, it's 6,233 days. And the Hebrew number, uh, H6233, means oppression. And then when we look at the other side, between the Edict of Milan and the movement of the city to Constantinople, we have uh, 6,176 days. And that number, uh, it, as a Hebrew number, H6176, means to be uh, stripped naked and destitute. And, and so both of those would refer to things that we would see um, under persecution. So but that that's something new. A any thought about this chart at this point? Any questions? Not yet. Okay. Now, now we did have another date for the Edict of Milan, something about when it was written or some, but I cannot find any confirmation. I think it was February 2nd or something like that, which is 131 days before uh, June 13th, 313. But I haven't been able to confirm it. Most people say that they don't know the date. Uh, there's some, so to put a date there, we just don't have a specific date. So we just have the date of June 13th, 313. But it was interesting, the 131 days, because we got these, all these ones and threes. Um, so the symbol of 313 obviously is ones and threes. Um, and, uh, you have 31 BC, which is one and a three, and then these spans of time, one three one four three three one three one three seven six. So, so just, just interesting structures there. That and and the center one, of course, is the one that would confirm that there is a connection between these two periods of 360 years because of that 125,200 days. So. So we have in both instances uh, symbols that we can attach to our time. And the fact that we use two different um, spans of 6,256 days, one inclusive, one cardinal, um, but that it gives us, it yields uh, connections with, um, so if, if we think about this here, the first thing is we have, if we start at 9-11, um, Right, and we counted that. It brings us to Jeff's summary on October 28th, 2018. So this has to do with uh, the 391 and everything connected with November 9th, right? So the affirmation of November 9th as, as a date. And then, um, and then we counted back from December 25th, 2021, the end of our 7 7 structure to get 11904, right? So, so um, these then become this structure, and it's this um, 9-11 and 11-9. All these hold it together along with this December 25th. And then, of course, even by going to the center here, giving us this June 22nd date in 2020, just sort of seals the deal. It, it makes the whole thing extremely unlikely to have occurred by chance. And I was thinking about this um, because we have these structures and we know that within the movement right now, the idea of the symbolic use of numbers, and I'm going to 
touch with this, touch on this on Sabbath. I, I mean, I mention it lots of times that these are structures that are highly unlikely to have occurred by chance. That is, um, one of the witnesses to our structures is their complexity. That is, sometimes people will see things and, and something happens that's a coincidence that would be a minor coincidence that it would be not very unlikely. It is, it would be likely, right? There are things that are just, they're going to happen. Um, you know, in, in lots of people's situ, there's, there's, they're not connected necessarily to anything else. They're, they're independent, not interdependent as far as their, uh, probability. But when you have things like this, like dates, each one is a, a probability. And when you start to put these together, they become highly unlikely to have occurred by chance. And an, an example that I was thinking of, um, was, um, you know, if, if, if Jeff were here and I could ask him the question, I would ask a really simple question. Um, okay, we're not going to look at the symbolic use of dates and numbers in our time because we don't believe in time setting. But what about if we look back in the past within this movement? Let's say we take Ezra 7 9. Ezra 7 9, um, helped us understand the structure that we had in 2016. And that is we had the first day of the first month being April 19th, 1844. And the fifth day of uh, the fourth month being July 21st, 1844. And the first day of the fifth month being August 15th, 1844. And the 10th day of the seventh month in 1844 being October 22nd. And we could take those symbols, first day of the first month, fifth day of the fourth month, first day of the fifth month, and the tenth day of the seventh month, and just take them as numbers, 11, 54, 15, and 107, and add them together. And we got the number 187, which is the number of days from the first day of the first month to the tenth day of the seventh month. Now, the chances of that just occurring randomly are extremely, extremely unlikely, but also we connect each of those dates to the book of Ezekiel. And in the book of Ezekiel, he has 13 dates listed there. And um, um, so he has, it starts with the fifth day of the fourth month. He's going to have uh, uh, the fifth day of the fourth month and the 10th day of the seventh month and the first day of the first month. And also when he lies on his left side, for 390 days, and then he begins to lie on his right side. He's going to lie on his right side starting on uh, August 15th. So he has August 15th. The fifth day of the fourth month happens to be July 21st, and the tenth day of the seventh month happens to be um, uh, October 22nd. And um, he also has in there one date that's uh, April 19th. One of his dates is April 19th. It's not the first day of the first month date, but it's another date, which happens to be April 19th. And then, you know, he has the August 15th date, and then he has the first day of the fifth month. Um, that's going to be when the mocking happens. So that means not are just, just, not just the biblical dates on that line are there, but also, um, the, the, the Gregorian dates represented as Julian dates. So, the chances of that happening randomly are extremely unlikely. Um, a rough estimate, I, I can't remember exact, the exact number, uh, but it would have something like 20 zeros. You know, if you, if you took all those dates and you tried to figure out that those four dates, both the Julian and the biblical dates would occur in the book of Ezekiel because he has 13 dates. So, it's just an extremely extreme impossibility. And then, of course, if you connect it with what actually happens in 1844, we're looking at things that are just so unlikely. And, and the question I would ask Jeff is, is that of God or of Satan? You know, and, and I could ask some simpler ones. Well, 70 AD for the destruction of Jerusalem is a symbol. Is that symbol there because of God or is Satan using it to deceive us in some way? And, and there are other things that we use as symbols that, 
I don't know if Jeff would accept or not. And this is, I would ask to anybody in the movement. Um, if, if these symbols aren't from God, how does Satan have control over biblical prophecy? And why would God allow him to have control over biblical prophecy? And if, if that's the case, could we trust 1844 and the 2300 days? Could we trust the 70 weeks? Right. So even before this movement has anything to do with time setting, we have looked back at prophecy such as we're looking at here, um, you know, especially in the past. So so this would have nothing to do with the present per se. Right. I mean, just as as a prophecy. And we can see these structures. And the question would be, um, why is that the case? Would Satan be given that by God to to establish prophecy? If and he did, then why would we believe any prophecy? How would we know uh, that the time setting of the Millerites, which appears to go against God's word as far as setting time for the second coming of Christ? Um, why would God allow that? And, and then could we trust it? And, and I think, you know, the answer to that for me would be that uh, we wouldn't be able to trust anything uh, that Adventism has done as far as time prophecy, that these would all just be the same type of coincidences. And then we have to think about, well, what is the purpose of all this? What, what it, why is it that we have studied prophecy? What was our motives in studying prophecy? Have we been doing this uh to do evil or to do righteousness? Are we asking God sincerely to lead and guide us? And, um, and, and sure, we could be misled, um, even when we have things that are true, right? So people can be misled. They can pick up on the truth. Um, but this movement has all of this evidence that God has been leading it. And this evidence is something objective. We would have to say that this is an objective measure of of God's leading. It's not something that's subjective. There are aspects that are subjective. The numbers themselves are not. How we interpret them could be. So people have misused um, uh, Gideon's ephod, right? There is a stumbling block that has occurred within the movement. But we we went through um, you know the book of Judges and we could see clearly uh, how how to recognize that God is leading us and where people have misused numbers. So people can misuse them. But when it comes to the fact of numbers existing and Palmoni using them in all different kinds of ways that we must, as Seventh-day Adventists, agree upon, um, it does not seem that you can just dismiss the numbers um, you know, out of hand. You can't just say, well, we can't use, have symbolic use of numbers. And of course, he could argue, well, those are all correct, but our use of them to set time is incorrect. And and I would say, well, one of the things that the numbers showed us is that we could not set dates and that that was fought against within the movement when we had all this evidence that we could not uh, figure out events ahead of time, especially those that are connected with any of God's special promises. You know, the time of the end, uh, you know, is not something we set, but we could look back and see it. And so we know that, that these dates, I don't know what he would think about the 126 years between 1863 and 1989. Is he going to say, well, we can't use that? Um, obviously dates in the future can be symbolic and we can't predict anything, but that's what the numbers themselves show us. So. Uh, yeah, if we were trying to predict events, if we were doing time setting, I think we would be in error. And July 18th, like the Millerite prediction, was in error, but the numbers were correct. The date was correct. What was wrong was the event that we could not predict. And so we should know that. But anyway, that's just some things that were going through my mind when it comes to thinking about these numbers here. Okay, A any other thoughts on this before we um, begin looking at uh, 
Daniel 11 again. Yeah, I just have to open up the document here. I think this is the right one. <clears throat> okay. So in, in Daniel chapter 11, we had started looking at uh, verse 25. But we, we need to go back and finish off uh, some of these verses here. So one is we have this historical interpretation of verse 23 and 24 that differs from Uriah Smith's as far as the, the what your fathers have not done. You shall do that which your fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers, or, or what his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. And that's going to be Titus's destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. Right. And then the scattering among them, the prey, the spoil, and the riches, we can say that among them is not in the Hebrew. It's not implied. Um, and so that this would refer to the diaspora uh, after the destruction of Jerusalem. And then we have these two verses, yea, he shall forecast his devices against, um, against the strongholds, even for a time. And we now have those charts there, which, which I'm going to put in the document, by the way. So just want to put that in here, but we need to, to, to describe how this is applied in our time. We need to figure out how how we, we would word this. Okay, so we got that. I guess that looks okay. So we have the even for the time. We have the two there. And then I guess I'll put in the present truth application one. So if we're going to say this even for a time, as we have placed it in our dates, what is it describing? How is it? paralleling with this history because we're going to have 9-11 and 11-9 and our line so of the 777 structure okay so if we go back to this chart again and we're going to say well this applies to to verse 24 um even for a time and uh there's two different meanings forecasting the devices from the stronghold and against the stronghold. So if we're going to say against the stronghold, um, we have this 9-11-2001 to Jeff's summary on October 28th, 2018. So we have an event that is an external event that's a, a way mark, 9-11, and it's going to go to Jeff's summary. Um is that from the stronghold or against the stronghold that's being represented? If you understand what I'm asking. I don't understand what you're asking. Okay, so we have two different interpretations of the verse. One is uh, forecasting his devices from the stronghold, and that would be uh, the Battle of Actium to the movement of the capital from Rome to Constantinople. If we had it as against the strongholds, this would be the persecution that's going to end in 313 with the Edict of Milan, but that's going to start with uh, the Battle of Pharsalus, right? So, so that's going to be relating to um, Rome getting into place to to give about this persecution, right? And we have, of course, symbols there dealing with uh, the north and the south as well. Um, but just to kind of simplify it, I mean, they're going to be one or the other. So we have these two periods of 6,256 days, and one must be symbolizing from the strongholds, and one must be symbolizing against the strongholds. Right? One must be symbolizing from the Battle of Pharsalus to the Edict of Milan, and one must be symbolizing from uh, the Battle of Actium to the movement of the capital of Rome to Constantinople. Does that make sense as a question? I'm still going to have to consider this further. Okay. Anybody else have an idea of how how we would look at this? Because we have two periods, just as we do in the historical application. Right? We have these two periods. I'm going to switch these diagrams around, by the way. Okay, so there's the present truth application. There's the historical application. Okay, now... When we're looking at this in 1124, 
where yeah. we're, we're saying he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds. Mm -hmm. Am I remembering this correctly that against is Hebrew 5921? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And so it's 5921. It doesn't mean against. It means from as in as as in upon or over. Okay, but is this where it's being considered as against is that against with a downward aspect? Well I don't know because it's 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 just the translation of the King James that the Hebrew doesn't say against. Now the reason I'm I'm having difficulty I'm looking at the digits of this number. Five nine two one? Right. Okay. Do I recall that Jeff was born in 1952? Uh, no, he wasn't. Was it 1951? 1951, yeah. All right. Yeah, so, I mean, so the number, what we're doing is we're saying, um, now the number itself, 5921, has some interesting characteristics. One is it's 31 times 191. Okay. So that... So 31 has two different meanings here. 31 can be 31 AD when Christ is crucified, but 31 can also be the Battle of Actium, right? So I'm just going to put this in here, references. So it's going to get that all messed up, so I'm going to undo that. Well, I'm going to do it this way. I'll put this before here. Well, I got more space there. Never mind. There we go. Okay, so so we can take this word um, H five nine two one equals thirty one times one nine one. Now, one nine one is important. Why? Midpoint of the seventy weeks of the four hundred ninety years remain yeah. years. Right. So we know, uh, and and do we have a the symbol of the midpoint of the seventieth week? as connected with the midpoint of the the 62 weeks, right? So it's the midpoint of the 62 weeks. Right. Right. So so I've already established the symbolism between the dividing of um, the midpoint of the uh, 434 years into two periods of 217 years with 191 BC as the center of that. Right. Um, so so these two symbols are already tied together. But now we're tying them to the Battle of Actium and it has also a 31, but it's a B.C. date. Right. So, I mean, there's lots of different connections here. So, um, you know, my mind is connecting all these different different things that we've already studied in the past. But this would help establish um, 31 B.C as part of this structure, right? Correct. So it helps uh, establish 31 BC and the center of the 434 years. So we've already looked at 191 BC because this has to do with with Rome, um, you know, conquering Greece, right? So it's just one of those dates. And that's the Battle of, um, what's it called? It's the Battle of Thermopylae. Correct. Yeah. I don't know how to spell Thermopylae. T H E R M Y P L A E, I believe. Oh, it's the A E there. Okay. Okay, so so it helps establish these these symbols, right? So there's more to it than this, but we'll just put that as the simplest explanation. So this word of against in this context, right? Because the word against shows up many times in Scripture, right? But we're having it here uh, helping to establish uh, the Battle of Actium symbol. So we have a number of witnesses for that, of course, 125,200 days. But 
but it also establishes because this would be what I call the weak translation of the verse, right? To say from um, again his device is against the strongholds. Um, this would be um, the way that 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 would be the one that that Swearingen's going to use. Um, but we also have that it's witnessing, so it's witnessing both. Um, so the strong one is against, right? Um, or pardon me, the 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 weak one is against. Uh, but that's the one that Swearingen uses, and the strong one, the one that it actually means, is uh, we would have to say at, upon or over, which would be more from. Uh, both of them are kind of against or from is not either of them are not really a direct translation of the Hebrew, but it's supporting both of them. That's what I'm trying to say. That these symbols help support both definitions, as well as the structure helps rep- represent both both interpretations of the Hebrew. And, and so that's pretty remarkable within that one word against that it, it witnesses to 31 and it also witnesses then to 48 BC, right? So it's, it's this double witness in that one word in the symbol of its, its only divisors, 31 and um, 191. <clears throat> so, so I think that's quite profound at, at, with these symbols. And the thing is, again, with these numbers, these numbers just become witnesses against something that we, we actually came to the conclusion through the study of the text itself, right? So we, we look at the text of what it could be applying to and we decide on it. And then we find these witnesses as we put these things together in structures, as we look at the Hebrew numbers, they all give us this, this testimony. Oh, and we must not uh, forget this either. I almost need to put this in the diagram. So I'm going to put this in the diagram. So we just talked <laughs> about um, this uh, 434 years, right? And the center of it, it being 191 BC. Right. Okay. So we also need to remember... I'll just borrow this. I mean, this is the piece de, de, de resistance for for what we just talked about. So the number of years here are how many years? So how many years are there between 313 BC and uh, 30 or 313 AD and 31 BC? I can do it that way. I'm going to change that. I'm doing that. 343. <laughs> okay. Right. So 343, right? So I'm just going to add this here. So this is a period not just of 125,200 days. It's going to be a period of uh, 343 years, right? Just, you know, as the rounded up, because obviously it's not that to the day, but it is that to the year. Um, So... 343 years is 7 times 7 times, whoops, 7 times 7 times 7, right? All right. So we already have that that structure where we take the 433 years of the 62 weeks and we take the 49 years of the, the 7 weeks and then the 1 week and we multiply them together. And we get 343. But we just keep finding more and more stuff. So you can see how this relates uh, to the um, to the 434 years with the and and the midst of the week here, 31 AD would be the midst of the week. And then we have uh, 191. That's the midst of the 62 weeks. Okay, but what diagram are you trying to show? Um, Oh, I didn't show you that, but I'll. It's the one you're looking at right there, the 125,200 days. All right. So that's a period of 343 years. I'm just going to put the diagram that I edited. So I just edited it and put it in there. That's not working. Oh, well, 
I'll just put it here. Um, there we go. So just I just added this 343 years here. Okay, did you see that? Yeah. Okay, so so now we have this symbol of 343, which is connected with the 434, which we get from um, taking that word against, right? That it's divisible by 31. And um, so I'm just going to put uh, going to put a foot add to this footnote. Uh, maybe I'll add it to this. That okay? Does that make make sense to people? What what we're seeing here? So so we have this multitude of 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 connections here with these numbers, and and that's. Um, so we have uh, the 343 years that connects to the 434, but we also have this number itself, the 5921, that also connects to the midst of the week um, in 31 AD, and which witnesses to 31 BC, and then uh, the 191 BC, which is the midst of the 62 weeks. So the 62 weeks are represented. So what we see represented here is the 70 weeks. Now, now, this becomes important in the context of, of what we had studied earlier. Because remember here we have this crucifixion of Christ. We're going to have the preceding verses, verses 19 uh, to 22, that are going to address these emperors. And, and it's going to lead to the crucifixion of Christ, which is going to be symbolizing July 18, 2020 in that line, right? And then we have this Jewish league line, but we can see that this Jewish league line is going to connect to this as well, right? So every time we look at these lines, they, they overlap. They have symbols that are attached to each of the previous lines are now showing up in these lines. Um, and so if we, if we're, if we're thinking about, um, Oh, what was the thought there? That, that it, they're, they're all connected. I'm just trying to explain how, how these are connected. So, so the idea of the Jewish league, when, when we're addressing this Jewish league, it's going to be leading to, um, you know, it's going to start at 9-11. So it's going to start here, right, in, in this line. Um, and it's going to end up having, uh, these these connections to the strongholds now so i want to go let me see if i can figure this out here quickly now so we have uh, against the strongholds so that so against the strongholds would be 9 11 going back to my earlier question right if, if we were going to say if we're going to apply that to against the strongholds that would be 9 11 it, it wouldn't be november 9th or December 25th, you know, it's going to be 9-11. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm just putting some other dates in here just to see what things pop up. Okay. That's interesting. So uh, just, um, so we have this 5921 as a symbol. So I was just trying to see if it fits anywhere um, as a span of time in our lines, right? So if we take 5921, I can't find a specific span, but I can find, so when we have 5921, and it's going to give us, you know, 31 and 191, right? And then we also uh, notice that uh, we have this 434 and the 343. Now, in our 777 structure, we know that we have a date that divides the 777 structure with January 16th. So we have January 16th, 2021. So I'll just show you this here. So in our charts, this, this here is, um, this is from November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021. You see the 111 weeks. 
And then we have this August 13th, 2022 date. That's that not really important here for what we're looking at. Mostly what we're focusing upon is that we can take these um, 777 days and there's actually three different ways that we can divide them uh, where we have these uh, reverse iteration of numbers, right? So we can have 252 and 525 days, right? We could have 100 and, um, um, 161 and 616, right? We could divide it in that. And we could also divide it in 434 days and 343 days, right? And so we had marked January 16th, uh, 2021, because we had a structure, which is not, not showing us this here. I wonder if I can find it uh, here with the 10 days of prayer and the 100 days of prayer. So this is the one I want. And so we know that we have January 6, 2021. And I was thinking about against the strongholds. Um, would January 6, 2021 have have anything to do with against the strongholds, the siege of Washington? So in other words, against the Constitution. Yes. Right. Now we have it in two aspects as well. I mean, we have, you know, from the strongholds because they're going to remove Trump from power in the uh, uh, whatever it's called, uh, the building. I can't remember the name of it, where they're having their meeting. What's the building called again? The What's the building that they storm? Just can't think of the name of the building. Anyway, the Capitol. That, the Capitol building, yeah. Okay, right? So that's going to, um, uh, you know, so we could look at that as a stronghold as well. And then we have um, the 10 days of prayer that's marking the end of that. Right. So the 10 days of prayer marks the beginning and the end. And, and it ends, the 10 days of prayer end on January 16th. And, and that's going to be 434 days after November 9th, 2019 and 343 days before December 25th, 2021. So the fact that we end up with this symbol from this word against, right? 5923 is being, right? So it's going to be, uh, so that's going to give us uh, the 191. So it's going to give us this 31, and it's going to give us this center of the week, right? And then we also relate uh, the center of the week. So there's the 343 years. So we have we have both represented the 434 days because we have the center of the 62 weeks, and we also have the span of time of 343 years. So we have this 777. So in this in this structure, I know it's a lot to think about, but in what we see in that verse, even for a time, in the application of these symbols into that historical event, it relates to this structure here, right? And we already had connected uh, this this symbol, December 25th, right, in the other chart. So, so I don't think we can just dismiss this and say, well... You know, this is um, this definitely is part of it. So that means we have to take this forecasting the devices against the strongholds uh, relating to um, these events on January 6th, but but particularly marking January 16th. So if we are to count the number of days from uh, the center of that not November 9th structure. So if we go to November 9th, 2004, the number of days to January 16th, 2021 is not 5,921, but it is 5,912. So would that be important? Can we say that 5,921 uh, can be represented five, by 5,912? Or is that not as clear as we would need? So we know that 5921 represents against, but the Hebrew number 5912 is the name Achan. Yeah, we've rearranged numbers before, so we can rearrange them. But it also represents Achan, right? So 5912, the number of days between 
the center of that November 9th chiasm, to January 16th, 2021. 5912 is the name Achan. And it's in Joshua 7, verse 18. And, and they have it here. So I'll show you what I'm looking at. So this is uh, Esword, that you're going to see. And notice that the word Achan shows up in here. Uh, does that look like July 18, 2020 to you? That shows up in Joshua 7, 1, a symbol of the first day of the seventh month. And then it says Joshua uh, 7, verses 18 to 20. It shows up three times there. So, so that's pretty interesting. Um, now the 22 verse 20, um, we have, we have a symbol of 22 restoration. We have, and then we have 20 there. The 724, um, what would 724 represent? It's, it's, if seven times 24 is 168, the number of, of hours in a week and how many, um, how many minutes are there in 168 hours or in one week? Do you, anybody remember what that is? Can't remember if that was significant. Well, maybe it wasn't the minutes. Anyway, we got the symbol of the week, the 168. So, so the name Aiken as a symbol, can we relate it to um, what's happening with the casting of the, uh, their devices against the strongholds, even for a time. Oops, that's not what I wanted to look at. Is this too many connections for our brains to, to bring together? So the 5921, which is the word against, can relate to the siege of Washington and this structure that's connected to it. Well, that's what I did wrong. Yeah, the number of... The number of minutes in seven days is uh, 10,080, which is a number that relates to relates to the Jewish calendar as well. So anyway, I'm not going to go there. But um, so that's the four seven times. The number, if you take uh, 25, 20 times four, you get 10,080. So so it relates to the uh, to the 25, 20. So there's all kinds of symbols there. Is this making sense? Are people bringing these connections together? That we can say that this, what happens in January 6th, in connection with the 100 days of prayer and the 10 days of prayer and July 18th and December 25th, this whole structure of our 777 is being represented with this battle of Actium. And that it connects to November 9th. And so that this is representing in our movement primarily everything dealing with November 9th and December 25th. That period of time. Right. So this even for a time represents this period of time from November 9th to December 25th. 2021. It represents the seven seven days. And, and it's even... Um, in connection with that word against, we can see that it relates specifically to these events from um, the center of this chiasm to uh, January 16th, 2021, which is related to that whole structure that you just saw. So hopefully people can follow that. It's, it's a lot of, it's tying together lots of threads, uh, which we have to do in our, in our minds because it would be too complicated to draw this all out. We would need to know all those parts to see that picture. So that's what it's, it's pointing to now, but it also relates to what's happening within the movement itself. Right. So part of that structure dealing with the siege of Washington, it also has tied into it, uh, June 22nd, 2020. So it, it's, it's referring to this movement as well. So what's happening in the United States is parallel to what's happening in this movement, that they, they're related. Can we agree with that? And what's happening in Rome, and 
moving the capital from Rome to Constantinople, is related to God's people, the persecution of God's people. The Edict of Milan and the, the moving of the capital of Constantinople are related events, right? So, so hopefully the people watching can, can bring together all of these symbols, but these, these are extremely unlikely symbols, uh, to come together in this way. And so I'm just going to do one more calculation here. Now, there was a question uh, yesterday at the end of the study that Stephen had brought up, and he's not here, but it was regarding the uh, the ozone camp, camp meeting. And, and the question had to do with uh, 2004. Does anybody remember what his question was about? I'm going to have to look it up. I can't remember exactly. But we were trying to figure out the date of the ozone camp meeting. Which, which I was not able to find. I know that it's in uh, November, and it's and they say um, uh, the middle of November. Now we had we were looking at this date, November 9th, two thousand and four, right? So I mean, we could count from that date. Uh, you know, five nine. We counted five nine one two. Uh, if we counted five nine two one, it would just bring us to. A January, January 25th, uh, 2021, which I don't have any significance of that date, but, um, we have another date that, that, that if we counted back from January 6th, uh, we get to October as an inclusive count, October 22nd, 2004. Uh, so that word against can be tied to the October 22nd date in 2004. So it's obviously not the date of, of, of the camp meeting itself, but it is a symbolic date. Right. So from October 22nd, 2004 to January 6th, 2021 is 5,921 inclusive days. So are we going to say that that's significant as well? I would think we'd have to say it is, right? Whether that's significant enough to, to write down, I don't know. But, but it does tie the date of October 22nd to the date of January 6th. And January 6th is what date on the biblical calendar? January 6th, 2021. Does anybody remember? It was October 22nd, well, not October 22nd. It was the 22nd day of the 10th month. So I, I think that we should have to put this in here. So in this chart or in a chart or some footnote or something, maybe I'll add it to this one here, uh, footnote no, dealing with here. 5,921 days from October 22. 2004 to January 6th, 2021, which is the 22nd day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar. Might be able to get some space from somewhere else. I know I have to edit, you know, edit this and arrange stuff later anyway, but. I'd like it to be bigger. Okay, so we keep finding all of these connections. We're, I'm trying always to move ahead, but every time we try to tie up a loose end, uh, we find some other little gem, which is to mix metaphors. But, um, you know, we see uh, we see something else in the tapestry, I guess, that we didn't see before, some other little detail. So this whole structure definitely is connected and and that is we're connecting events in our history to these uh, to the symbols that come from uh the even for a time and the word against right so this word against that gives us 31 and 191 and 433 and October 22nd, 2004, and January 6th, 2021. 
and and it also gives us this uh which I probably should add somewhere I didn't write it anywhere uh but deals with this um uh January 16th date as well so I'll maybe just write a quick note <clears throat> okay so that just reminds me I'll probably do a chart on that as well or put it into one of these charts. Okay, so we should be done with even for a time when against the strongholds, uh, forecasting his devices against the strongholds. Okay. <clears throat> Are we satisfied with that at this point? Can we move ahead to verse 25 again? Okay, so. <clears throat> so now when we're going to address verse 25, Octavian is not going to be representing Obama, right? Because that would make no sense. So, so he is going to stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south. So historically, uh, this is going to be Octavian, um, who's now the king of the north. And we still have Egypt, the king of the south. And this, is, of course, is going to describe what happens with the Battle of Actium, right? So it's going back and repeating over this history that we have already covered. So it's, it's talking about the beginning, the Battle of Actium itself. Now, uh, and, and we would also say that this stirring up his power, according to Swearingen, um, would be related to, uh, what happens with the Battle of Pharsalus, right? So that's kind of where, where he's coming from. Um, and I'm just going to read this again. Right. And, and we, there was all this uh, mistakes. There was some or, or trying to understand what he was saying. So when Ptolemy the 12th died in 51 BC, right? Not Ptolemy the 11th. Ptolemy the 12th doesn't die in 51 BC. It's Ptolemy the, or Ptolemy 11th doesn't. It's Ptolemy the 12th. Correct, Dwight? Is that what we decided? Just to uh, do this here. Um, so it's Ptolemy the 12th. Yeah, so he's going to die in 51 BC, not Ptolemy the 11th. So Soringen has a typo. And, oops, I need to do that. Okay. So, so we're going to be marking that event as part of this stirring up. The Battle of, of, of Pharsalus, which is when he defeats Caesar would eventually appear in Egypt after his defeat of Pompey. At Pharsalus, right? So it's this defeat of Pompey that, uh, and what would, and I, I don't know if Dwight's there or not. So what would the defeat of Pompey have to do with, um, this power being stirred up, right? So if we go back here, so with this, so we have Octavian here. Um, so I'm just going to go back and read what he says. He shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And he, in the above pa- subpassage, would obviously still refer to pagan Rome, right, the new king of the north. And based on our understanding of Daniel 11, verse 5 to 15, the king of the south would still be Hellenistic Egypt. Yet after Octavian finally subjugated Egypt in 50 BC, this power would lose its status as the literal king of the south. Therefore, verses 25 to 28 must be referring to a time when, prior to Octavian's subjugation of the region, Hellenistic Egypt would war against pagan Rome. This war did take place simultaneously with the rise of Octavian to power, and it would now will now prove useful to discuss a brief history of the Roman involvement in Egypt. While Pompey was in the process of subjugating Judea, Syria in 64-63 BC, he was aided by the Egyptian king Ptolemy uh, and that would be Ch- Ptolemy the 12th in my understanding here, right? So Ptolemy the 12th is Aletes, Uletes, however you say his name. Just looking at it, Uletes, maybe is how it's pronounced. Um, probably the accent on the penultimate syllable. Okay. Okay. So that's Ptolemy the 12th, not the 11th, because he dies in 51 BC, who later was later driven to Rome in exile because of revolt in Alexandria. After a usurper named Archelaus was placed on the Egyptian throne, 
the exiled Ptolemy XII, appealed to the Roman Senate for his restoration of power in 57 BC. After securing senatorial support, he would recruit one Aulus Gabinius, the proconsul of Syria and the protege of Pompey, to lead an actual invasion into Egypt. The military operation proved to be a success, resulting in the death of Archelaus, thus the restoration of power left Ptolemy the Twelfth indebted to Rome. So it's too bad they have these typos, but it was useful uh, for us. When Ptolemy the Twelfth died in 51 BC, he, his will revealed that he had bequeathed Egypt to Rome with the stipulation that his two oldest children, Cleopatra the Seventh and Ptolemy the Twelfth, Theus Philopater, should marry and reign jointly. Caesar would eventually appear in Egypt after his defeat of Pompey at Pharsalus to settle a dynastic dispute that would eventually take place between these two co-regents. His just, he justified his presence by stating that he was there on official Roman business to serve as an arbiter, arbitrator in the conflict between the king and the queen. Yet, in reality, Caesar coveted the wealth and resources of the rich land of the Nile and determined to ex an extended stay. This would lead to an armed rebellion against the Roman presence in Egypt, which resulted in the Alexandrian War. Initially besieged, so in this Alexandrian War, so so it, it gets a little bit confusing the way that he's written this. So the Alexandrian War, that's going to, so when he talks about Caesar here, this is Julius Caesar, right? Because Julius Caesar dies in 44 BC. And this Alexandrian War is that war where Caesar goes in to Alexandria. That's where he, um, he gets, um, right? So initially besieged in the royal capital at Alexandria, Caesar's Syrian legions along with the Jewish force of 3,000 men led by the faithful Antipater would come to his rescue. With the relief force, Caesar would stir up his power and courage against the king of the south with a great army, right? So um, that's where he's going to meet while he's in that siege. He's going to meet um, Cleopatra, right? So so what we're saying here is um, that the king of the north being stirred up has to do with all of these events uh, that happened before Caesar's death, right? So that's establishing establishing Rome, putting it in place to defeat the king of the south, right? So there's this, it, it's it's going to be a complicated um, uh, situation. It's not not as straightforward. You know, we have these these two different uh, kings. So so part of what I guess I would have a contention with in how we have this drawn up how we've put this um so here if we're going to say he pagan rome octavian um wouldn't this actually be um not octavian but julius caesar based on what he wrote that is you know this is you know at least julius caesar has to be in her here because he's going to stir up his power and but yet we're saying, well, this is Cleopatra and Mark under Mark Anthony, Egypt. But but this actually begins with Caesar. So I don't know if I would put just Octavian there. So we either have to put because and, and Octavian, of course, here at this point, I mean he's not he's not Caesar, right? But um I don't know if I want Octavian there. You know, people happy if I delete Octavian. And there must be something here because this because this relates to to Julius Caesar and to Octavian because he's he's going to be involved there as well because we are going to have Mark Antony and Cleopatra involved there in that situation right because we're going to get to the Battle of Actium but here I don't think we can just put Octavian there we just say pagan Rome king of the north so when he's going to stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south. I mean, obviously that would be Octavian because he's going to be the one that does that. But still it's pagan Rome, right? And then we're going to, when we get to the Battle of Actium, then it's specifically, uh, you know, Mark Antony and Cleopatra. 
So I don't know. I, I would tend to just take this out because this is more preparation for something that's then going to be. Okay, I'm not sharing this. Sorry about that. I've just started editing this a little bit. So what I did is I took Octavian out of here, where it said Pagan Rome Octavian, and then I took out Mark Antony and Cleopatra uh, here. I'm just going to say it's the King of the North. This is Pagan Rome. This is Egypt, right? And this stirring up is this preparation for, for war. And then when we get to the King of the South, uh, that's going to be Antony, stir, shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army, but he shall not stand, right? So now we can bring Octavian and Antony into this history, but not into this first part, because this is just more general. Pagan Rome and Egypt. Um, but when this, the king of the south is stirred up, that's going to be under Mark Antony. Obviously, this pagan Rome, the king of the north being stirred up, is not under Octavian. This is under Julius Caesar. But I'm just going to take them out. So we have the Battle of Actium is there. And there, there are some symbols here that we, we could address, um, but we'll probably come back to some of these later on, dealing with spans of time. And now they're also going to forecast their devices, but here they're going to forecast their devices against him. So if we look at the king of the north and the king of the south, and we're going to make an application to our time, we're definitely going to have to understand this as being about the Republicans and the Democrats. And we can already see how this the symbol of the Battle of Actium is connected to what happens with the defeat of Trump. But we have to we have to try to figure out how, how that works, because obviously here the king of the north is going to defeat the king of the south. So so maybe this. Maybe this has to do with the defeat of maybe this has to do something with, uh, you know, Trump initially. I don't know. But I'm just saying we have the north and the south and we have the civil war. And and the north is normally going to represent the Republicans, the South is going to represent the Democrats. So maybe this is referring to a future defeat of uh, the Democrats. And that might make sense. This might be about the Republicans uh, defeating the Democrats in what we would. Now, that means we're going to take the Battle of Actium and we're going to say that it it's going to symbolize the Battle of Paneum. And that would make sense because the North defeats the South, right? That's Paneum. So maybe there's something in here that we're going to have to, to apply to our history. But yeah, so I've taken some things out of there. So we would have to say, um, if we're just going to put this in here tentatively, we're going to make like a present truth application. We're going to have to say Republicans, and just in this sort of broadest sense, so we've got Republicans and Democrats. And then when we start to to refine this, um, we we'll have to figure out who Antony represents. Does he represent Biden? But we also know that there's Antony and Cleopatra. Um, I don't know if I would want to compare Cleopatra to um, Hillary, but um, but anyway, you know. So we'd have to. Usually, a woman represents a church or something. But it's it's the South that's aligned with a church, a woman, right? And so we'd have to figure out what that means. So we have this forecasting of the devices, and we're going to have to see where that fits in. And this feeding of the portion of his meat shall destroy him and his army. And I don't know what that means. So we still have some of the historical application. Uh, but he shall overflow, many shall fall down slain, Antony's army and navy would be defeated. So, so we have to figure out what this battle of Actium is typifying. And it seems that it would be typifying the battle of Paneum in our time, right? So the battle of Paneum and the battle of Actium are both the king of the north defeating the king of the south. Any final comments before we close with prayer? Okay, let's pray. The dear father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning. We ask for your presence throughout this day. Thank you for all you do in our lives. 
May you continue to help us uh, in these studies. And I pray for each person. We pray for your angel's care and protection over those that we love. And, um, and that you can help us to minister to those that we need. And we pray this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.